सबसे बड़ी समस्या है कि यहाँ जो गरीब तब के लोग हैं सूर्य से लेकर आज तक बेचारे बिल्कुल असहाय गरीबी से तंग बेरोजगारी तो काफ़ी हद तक बढ़ चुकी है यहाँ तक कि खाने पीने के लिए व्यवस्था बेचारे लोग नहीं कर पाते हैं कानून बनना चाहिए कि जिसकी जमीन है उससे पूछ के उसका रेट तो तय होना चाहिए बाहर के लोग आज काम कर रहे हैं इसका भी फायदा लोगों को नहीं मिल रहा है पर्यावरण में प्रदूषण होगा ये तो टिकरी वालों को ही मिलेगा किसान से कौन पूछता है किसान से कोई नहीं पूछ रहा है यहाँ के जड़ी बूटी महुआ और तेंदू पत्ता है सब विनाश हो जाएगा इसका साधन जो उनको रोजगार मिलता है रोजगार समाप्त हो जाएगा भाई पानी नहीं होगा तो जीना उनका हराम हो जाएगा परेशानी होगी बढ़ेगी जमीन जमीन नहीं बची सब अधिग्रहण कर लिया गया हमारा जमीन गया और हमारे जमीन पर कब्जा कर लिए सरकार किसी को न सर्विस मिला और न रहने का कोई साधन दिया चालीस बाई साठ से अलावा कोई साधन न दिया न पानी का साधन न आवास का साधन न रोड का साधन न सौ नाला का पानी पीना पड़ता है और उसी में नहाना उसी में कपड़ा साफ करना सब मुआवजा में भी यहाँ पे काफ़ी संशय है सभी को मुआवजा नहीं मिला है तीस सालों में परिजना आज तक हमको पीने के लिए शुद्ध पानी तक नहीं दे पाया चिड़ियाघर में जानवरों को भरपूर जगह मिलता रहने के लिए और हम चार चार भाइयों का परिवार चालीस बाई साठ में बन, जानवर से बदतर जीवन जी रहे हैं तो प्रशासन भी धमकी देती है लोगों को तुमको जेल उसको नहीं कहती है कि तुम इन लोगों को ड्यूटी दो नहीं तुमको जेल भेज देंगे अब पब्लिक को लाठी लेकर भाजते हैं तो अन्याय हो रहा है हम लोग के साथ नहीं। हम लोग भले खत्म हो जाए लेकिन ये परियोजनाएं खत्म होने वाली नहीं है इतना जल्दी The Black Diamond Express links Kolkata, Eastern India's urban hub, to Dhanbad, the coal capital of the country, located 270 kilometers away. The name of the train signifies the importance of this fossil fuel in a country trying to rapidly industrialize. Coal meets India's critical energy needs. It is responsible for more than half the total electricity used in the country. It is crucial for the manufacture of steel, cement and many other products. The manner in which coal mining takes place epitomizes corruption and much that is wrong with the governance of India's political economy. In the early 1970s, the government headed by Indira Gandhi nationalized coal mining in the country in response to persistent reports of unscientific mining practices and inhuman exploitation of workers by private miners nationalization did not however prevent the open flouting of laws corruption in coal mining became deeply ingrained in the popular consciousness aapko kya fikr ho sakti hai seth sahab panch mazdoor marte hain mar jaye badi garibi hai is basti mein पांच की जगह पच्चीस आ जाएंगे आपका काम चलता रहेगा तिजोरी भरती रहेगी इस फेस को काटने के लिए मजबूत खंभों की जरूरत है मगर यहाँ गिनती के खंभे और वो भी सड़े हुए और आप अच्छी तरह जानते हैं कि इससे छत के गिरने का खतरा पैदा हो सकता है जिसे मजदूरों की जाने जा सकती है इन मजदूर मलकट्टों की जान से कहीं ज्यादा कीमती है ये कोयला इन ऑर्डर टू माइंड मोर कोल 
richly forested areas and fertile agricultural tracts were taken over without the consent of local inhabitants who were wholly dependent on such lands and forests for their livelihoods. The main reason is that the source of sustenance of all these people, not the mining people, but the people who lived in the area, was land. That land has been lost to mining. Collapse, open cast mining. So they have nothing to fall back on for sustenance. So the only way out, they have joined the chain of mafia gang who pilfered the coal, put them in trucks. It's not only in Jhoria, it's the same story in the open cast areas of Ramiko. It's the same in uh, everywhere in all the coal fields of India. They are a sort of ecological refugees, you know. Tower, India will awake to life and freedom. Now, we have to increase production, which we need more coal. We need more One of the biggest scandals related to coal mining hit the headlines on the 22nd of March 2012 when the Times of India, the world's most widely circulated English daily, published the contents of a draft report by the Controller and Auditor General of India which revealed that a screening committee set up in 1992 by the Ministry of Coal gave out licenses for mining in captive coal blocks to a number of companies in an arbitrary, non-transparent manner and enabled these firms to reap windfall gains at the expense of the exchequer. The report of the CAG, which was tabled in Parliament on the 27th of August 2012, alleged that the country had incurred a loss of a stupendous rupees 1 lakh 86,000 crore or the equivalent of 33 billion US dollars by allocating coal fields in an arbitrary manner and at throwaway prices. I, Manmohan Singh, do swear in the name of God that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of India as by law established. While I was secretary, Prime Minister was Minister for Coal for almost almost a year. In between, we had Mr. Shubhu Soren coming twice and then going back. Prime Minister, as soon as I put that subject to him, he agreed that yes, we need a transparent bidding system. But then, uh, within the ministry, the then uh, Minister of Minister of uh, State for Coal, Mr. Rao, and when and Mr. Shibu Soren came back to the ministry, both of them were not in favour of the system, and therefore, quite some time, both of them scuttled the proposal. I had got Law Ministry's approval for getting amendment to Coal Mine Nationalisation Act which would have put the bidding system on a firm legal footing. In spite of that, the file kept on moving up and down between Ministry of Coal and Ministry of Law. To my mind, the whole objective was to keep the whole process into suspended uh, animation till all good blocks have been allocated through the system. And then perhaps do it when uh, nothing really is left for putting for bidding. The state's politicians and the politicians at the centre, they did not want a transparent procedure. It's as simple as that. But still, unless you have a procedure like auctioning, you will never be able to discover the price of coal accurately. Because in a non-transparent uh, process, 
we will never know the value of a given coal block and the liver, give the value of uh, the, the cost of production of coal. Now, in a way, I think the whole uh, community of uh, politicians and bureaucrats in the states and the center, perhaps they were hesitant to switch over to auctioning because uh, somehow there, I think there are many, many vested interests in this. Competitive bidding seems to be the ultimate solution to save the bureaucrat or to save the policy maker of any kind of allegations. People are forgetting that we are going to build this country not on trying to save the bureaucrat. We are going to build this country on building infrastructure. Let's not get overboard and overexcited about the fact that the Prime Minister, being the coal minister, besides being the Prime Minister, having 10,000 different things to do, should have focused on this one particular issue and told these guys to expedite the process. This is all hindsight thinking. Now, so far as issue of building consensus is concerned, who should build the consensus? It is the, the political executive who has to take initiative and build consensus. Now, if within the ministry, the MOS and the minister were opposed to the idea of bidding, then no attempt was really made to build consensus. So to say that because there was no consensus and therefore the process got delayed, I don't think it's a very, very reasonable statement. Earlier you had a, a market uh, price which was much lower than the actual price and therefore there was black marketing of coal. After Coal India did e-auctions, the actual market price went up. And the coal blocks that were allotted before about 2003 were not really, you know, uh, very uh, sought after. It was, it was more a particular industry wanted to do something, so it went and pursued its case. About 2004-2005, we had the global boom and the commodity cycle up, uh, went up and suddenly coal was hot property. Unfortunately, today in 2013, India is suffering because all that coal that was allotted has not been opened up and that's not getting converted into power. When you give a, a resource at a very low price through non-competitive procedures and that coal can be sold by the other party or he can raise money from the banks on the market value basis, then you are really giving away a largest to the private party. The second thing is, natural resources pricing is a very difficult one because they are limited resources. So when you give it away in large quantities to private parties, I mean, these are like common resources. And I think there is a doctrine of public trust that applies. The government is nothing but a trustee on behalf of the people for these public resources, natural resources. So I think when you, when you give away these resources, the government should realize that it's merely a trustee and they should not fit away. They should not indiscriminately give away these resources. Various influential individuals who were identified were connected with the promoters and directors of the private companies that had obtained rights to mine coal. Such persons included many affiliated to the ruling Indian National Congress Party, including Nagpur Member of Parliament and Newspaper Baron Vijay Dardha and his brother, Maharashtra Education Minister Rajendra Dardha, MP from Kurukshetra Haryana, Naveen Jindal and his brother-in-law, as well as serving and former union ministers, such as Subodh Khan Sahai, former union minister for food processing, Sri Prakash Jaiswal, Minister of State for Coal, and Santosh Bagrodia, former Minister of State for Coal. Others included S. Jagad Rakshakan of the Dravida Munnetra Karagam, who was then Minister of State for Information and Broadcasting. Among the beneficiaries was a company associated with Member of Parliament belonging to the Bharatiya Janata Party, Ajay Sancheti, who is close to the party's former president, Nitin Gadkari. A number of companies that were granted leases for captive coal blocks apparently had little or nothing to do with producing power, steel or cement. Some of these firms were manufacturing chewing tobacco and compact discs. I think the CAG should have gone deeper into the issue of why they have squatted before making that comment. Uh, I think he has gone purely based on the limited information that has been provided to him. Uh, I also feel that those who have sold their shares out of frustration 
or out of the fact that their projects were not able to come or out of the fact that banks were not willing to finance their power projects in time or there were delays or cost overruns or they just decided it was too much of a hassle. But people are coming, going to come and invest in that sector and particularly infrastructure is a very long gestation, capital intensive industry. Now to me, it makes no difference that if you are asking me to open up the sector and give coal allocations only to the same people who are already in the coal industry and not give it to any outsiders doesn't make sense. Then I'm not broadening my scope of investors. Second thing is, how do I care who's investing money? Money does not bother about, you know, it, money has no color. Money is fungible. Uh, we need investments in the sector. So if I, if I can get somebody to come and invest from in America, or South America or the Eskimo land, it's fine with me as long as I can get investments into the sector. Now it is possible that a company is in a unrelated business but still would like to get into power or sponge iron or any of those activities. If you have enough financial resources to get into a new business, possibly there is nothing wrong in considering them also. But if you had companies which were already in this business of power or steel or cement, my assessment would be that priority must be necessarily given to those who are already in the business instead of looking at totally new people. Now, apparently when you have a system of discretion, these kind of things are bound to happen. Let's take, let's take the Darda and the Jindal example. Imagine I am his brother or his cousin or whatever and I am going to get a coal block. I have to show financial strength. I have to show credibility. I have to show cash net worth. I have to establish some kind of track record. I have to establish some sort of credibility. I'll do something with it. I have no experience. I don't have the cash, but my cousin or my brother does. Sure. I'm going to ask him, boss, will you support me? Can we do this together? Sure. You see, as a developing country, let's not behave like we're behaving in, in the United States that we have one billion options and this was very badly done. Do you have options? They're all living hand to mouth. You yourself encourage uh, giving away coal blocks in a highly non-transparent way saying that the other, you know, many states wanted that, somebody else wanted that. Basically, it is, is an argument to justify chronic capitalism. And not only in, the, in, the, in this sector, coal, it, ha it has happened across the board, in all sectors. And in the case of coal, I think one should look at coal in conjunction with the merchant power plants and the banks. So this chronic capitalism is a much bigger thing in the case of this sector. I, call, I, will, I would like to call it a mega scam. It's not just Colgate. It is coal, much and power plant, uh, financial institution scam in a way. And that has to be looked at. <laughs> The Colgate scandal took a sudden and dramatic turn in April 2013. The Supreme Court castigated the CBI for showing the status report on its investigations to the political executive, despite claims to the contrary by the top law officers of the government. Media reports disclosed that the union law minister Ashwini Kumar had called the CBI director Ranjit Sinha to his office. Together with officers in the Ministry of Coal and the Prime Minister's office, they made changes to the status report of the CBI. According to the Supreme Court of India, the heart of the report was altered. The judges described the representatives of the CBI as caged parrots. A fallout of the Apex Court's observations was the resignation of the additional Solicitor General of India, Harin Raval, one of the top law officers in the country. He had earlier written to the highest law officer, Attorney General Gulam Vahanwati, that an attempt was being made to make him a scapegoat, as he had told the Supreme Court that the CBI's report had not been seen by the political executive. It's unacceptable. You are the, you know, the topmost legal officer. You cannot say that there were political compulsions and uh, thus you had to lie to the court. Harin Raval submitted his resignation on the 20th of April to Law Minister Ashwini Kumar. 
who thereafter himself resigned from his post on the 10th of May 2013. Any, uh, you know, taking away of community resources or the nation's resource and handing it over to a group of people, which, you know, also widely called as crony capitalism, is, is, uh, is, is the hallmark of this governance, right? And it has been happening in scales which are, you know, increasing every day. And uh, if you find the nexus, it's not, it's not just that, you know, the coal block was allotted to that person. The, the same politician in another guise has also been allotted the thermal power plant. He has been also allotted the, you know, uh, this thing to supply salt for the PDS system. So the nexus is, you know, much wider of this uh, crony capitalism. Mining has led to growing immiserization of tribals. I say this as a member of the ruling establishment. And I have no hesitation in saying that whatever the complexion of the government in the states, or whatever the complexion of the government at the center, tribal areas to policy makers are simply mineral rich areas. We are more bothered about bauxite, iron ore, coal, than about the people who live on their lands. And it is the nature of mining, ecologically unsustainable and socially devastating, that has caused the tribal disconnect to increase. की कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी माओवादी जिंदाबाद 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 साम्राज्यवाद मुर्दाबाद 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 सलवा जुड़ो मुर्दाबाद 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 सलवा जुड़ो फांसीवादी अभियान को हरा दो हरा दो हरा दो राहत शिविर में रहने वाले जनता को घर वापस आओ घर वापस आओ घर वापस सलवा जुड़ो राहत वी हैव टू फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड एंड रियलाइज दैट द प्रोसेस ऑफ डेवलपमेंट एज़ फार एज़ वी आर कंसर्नड शुड टेक अ लॉन्ग the poorest of the poor. That has been our ideology uh, all along. So when this process takes place, we have to take into consideration the interests of these uh, people. And I don't think much attention has been paid to that aspect uh, till today. So until uh, this entire uh, package uh, is thought of and uh, put in place, uh, you know, we'll be jumping the gun and creating more and more problems and driving uh, more forest dwellers and tribals into the laps of extremism. All the disturbances that you are witnessing today among the tribals is probably due to the threat of mining today. In a Schedule 5 area, strict, I mean, no non-tribal or a tribal who is not scheduled in that, in a particular state, in that particular state can either take land on lease or buy land. We have to first understand and realize that the process of development as far as we are concerned should take along the poorest of the poor. That has been our ideology. Just because the poor tribals and the forest dwellers are voiceless, because they're economically poor, this is no way to deal with our people. Now I'm quoting a World Bank report 
running into the early 90s, that the government of India's track record from 1947 till that time, they had almost four and a half million displaced people because of projects who had still not received the land and the compensation that had been promised to them. Rehabilitation, resettlement record across the board is terrible. To my mind, there are there are solutions possible which will uh, be in a position to give us a win-win situation for all the stakeholders. And we must strive at that. And therefore, to my mind, sustainable mining is possible. But if you look at relatively long time frame, starting there will be removal of trees, there will be breaking of ground, there will be you know, dumping of overburden, all those problems will come. If you had a good mine closer plan, you ensure that uh, simultaneously with digging, you are also doing refilling. You also do afforestation simultaneously. You know, public policy means that you have to ensure public welfare, not necessarily maximize revenue. Actually, power is more important for the poor, not for the rich, because the rich can get their gensets. It's the poor who will actually benefit from power. Uh, the existing uh, uh, rule in, in uh, mineral allocations actually is first come, first served, which is absurd. And clearly in India, the poverty bowl of India is the mineral bowl of India. The manner in which neither the public sector nor the private sector has fulfilled its environmental or social obligations as part of mining has led to further and further discontent. Look upon tribals as people first and not as people who have to be displaced so that we can get out more coal, more uranium, more iron ore, more bauxite, more manganese, which are all the raw materials of a, of a fast growing economy. The Singroli region, often called the electricity hub of India, comprises a few hundred square kilometers along the common border of Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh and close to the boundaries of three other states, Bihar, Jharkhand and Chhattisgarh. The region has installed power generating capacity of around 15,000 megawatts and already provides roughly 10% of the country's coal-based energy. Approvals given to various companies, both publicly and privately owned, if and when translated into implemented projects, will double the existing power generating capacity. In a few contiguous districts, Sonbhadra in Uttar Pradesh and Singroli and Siddhi in Madhya Pradesh are located some of India's biggest coal reserves. What represents a great investment opportunity for corporate entities is a resource curse to local populations. In January 2011, Greenpeace organized a fact-finding team comprising specialists in human rights, environment and political economy to visit this area. The team found that coal mining had had a devastating impact on the environment and had destroyed the livelihoods of many traditional residents. I was posted as the additional collector in Singroli in 1983-84. Uh, it was a very different Singoli at that time. The Hachal project uh, on the Madhya Pradesh side 
was uh, was coming up and they were desperately seeking land at that stage i was living actually uh, in what was still a very almost like a, a very small village and uh, i saw close hand uh, what displacement means uh, we are now into a different era where displacement is largely uh, for private companies uh, that was still during the period where displacement was for Uh, large infrastructure projects uh, for government, uh, which government implemented, and I saw very close up the Sardar Sarovar battle as well as the consequences, and Singroli, where I saw the consequences of that displacement, which is why I feel so passionately about uh, the injustice that is built in not just into the law, but in the way that that law is implemented. We were. Hugely indifferent to the fact of of the suffering that was caused, because the people affected were the most disadvantaged. चला जाए कोनो कंपनी ले ली खदान खोल दी तो हमरे काम ना दी तो तकलीफ में ना बा काम दे दी तब मैं भूल आ जाई ना दी तब तब फिली गए ना तब कहाँ जाई महुआ भी ना कहाँ से खाई इसने दिया है कि आपको बीस कापित की बार में मिली आप लोगों का विधवा पेंशन मिलेगा तो दस हजार महीना बो, बोला है देने के और वो बोले हैं कि बच्चों का पढ़ने के लिए कॉलेज देंगे और आप लोगों की जितना परिवार है एक परिवार में एक नौकरी देंगे तो हम लोगों का ठग करके रिलायंस और ये सब काम किया है विस्थापित कार्ड बनवाया है तो हम लोगों का ठग करके बनवाया है कि सब चीज़ आप लोगों का माने सुविधा देंगे और दिया नहीं है और कब देगा मर जाएगा आदमी तब देगा पूछ रहा हमरन की साधन नहीं दिए है साहब तब का कही हम कि ना लाइन ना बिजली ना तो हम के कूलर ना पंखा ना हम के कुछ नहीं दिए है में जंगल गाय में आन कर लड़क दिए हैं तो कहाँ पाई हम धूप में मरते हैं आ जंगल में भाई रही तो वहाँ रू पेड़ पौधा रहे तो मैं जाकर छही आई आ जाई आ यहाँ कहाँ मिले पत्ता मुखारी वहाँ करी करी खाई आ यहाँ तो कुछ काम रोजगार हम की जंगरे कर ना पारब दूसर काम अब कैसे दाना खाब कैसे का कर हमारा जमीन गया और हमारे जमीन पर कब्जा कर लिए सरकार और लोग लोगों को गांव घर के लिए बच्चों को ड्यूटी नहीं दे रहा है कहता है कि लोकल है नहीं देंगे तो बताइए कि हमारे जमीन में सब हो रहा है तो हम लोग ऐसे ही मर जाए भूखे जो यहाँ मुआवजे की दर है वो किसानों की जमीन के मुताबिक नहीं है बहुत ज़्यादा कम है निगरी में पावर प्लांट लग रहा है पर टिकरी वालों को इससे कोई बेनिफिट नहीं है पर जो पर्यावरण में प्रदूषण होगा ये तो टिकरी वालों को ही मिलेगा क्योंकि जो तीन किलोमीटर से दूरी के एरिया है वहीं उसका दूर उठ के जाएगा है पर टिकरी वालों को जे पी पावर प्लांट से कोई बेनिफिट वर्तमान में नहीं है यहाँ जो मजदूर लोग काम कर रहे हैं क्योंकि यहाँ कोई कुशल श्रमिक तो है नहीं जो प्लांट के बारे में जानते हो सब अकुशल हैं उन्हें मजदूरी ही मिलती है जो मशीनी मिस्त्री हैं सब बाहर के लोग हैं बाहर के लोग आ काम कर रहे हैं इसका भी फायदा लोगों को नहीं मिल रहा है पानी का स्रोत अब यही नदी है लोगों को जीने के लिए तो ये इसका प्रदूषण मतलब डस्ट से बहा जाएगा और कचरा फैला के प्लांट का इसमें डाल रहे हैं पानी रोक रहेंगे तो खत्म हो जाएगी बाजार बीमारी फैलेगी गरीबों को परेशानी होगी प्रदूषण फैलेगा बीमारी फैलेगी और लोग यहाँ मजदूरी तक नहीं पा रहे हैं बाहर के लोग मजदूरी कर रहे हैं इससे पहले हम जहाँ पर जिना लगी हैं वहाँ हम लोगों की भूमि थी वहाँ से विस्थापन हम लोग किए गए हैं और इसके बाद इसी डिबुलगंज में आके हम लोग बसे हुए हैं यहाँ मात्र हम लोगों को 40 बाई 60 का प्लाट प्लाटिंग दिया गया है उसी में हम लोग अपना जीविका अर्जन करते हैं रोजगार का कोई साधन नहीं है मात्र यह परियोजना है
तमाम प्रकार की फैक्ट्रियाँ दिन प्रतिदिन बढ़ते जा रही हैं और यहाँ जो जंगल के पेड़ पौधे भी अब वो नहीं रहे कि जो हम लोगों को शुद्ध वातावरण दे सकें इसके वजह से जल प्रदूषित हो रहा है वायु प्रदूषण प्रदूषित हो रहा है और हम लोग इसी प्रदूषित वायु को ग्रहण करते हैं जल को ग्रहण करते हैं और शायद हम ऐसा करते ही रहेंगे आने वाले भी दिनों में क्योंकि इतना जल्द हम लोग भले ख़त्म हो जाएँ लेकिन ये परियोजनाएँ ख़त्म होने वाली नहीं है इतना जल्द देखिए मुआवजा में भी यहाँ पे काफ़ी संशय है सभी को मुआवजा नहीं मिला है जिनके मकाने थी उनको भी ये कहते हैं कि ये मकान से प्रभावित इनको हम कुछ नहीं दे सकते लेकिन हंड्रेड परसेंट जिनकी ज़मीन गई तो उनको नौकरी देने का प्रावधान है तो उनका तो सिर्फ मकान था वो चला गया तो भी तो हंड्रेड ही होगा उनको भी राइट बनता है पाने का लेकिन ये परियोजना मैनेजमेंट ऊर्जा विभाग केवल यहाँ के विस्थापितों को गुमराह करते हुए परियोजनाओं का निर्माण करते चले जा रही है और यहाँ के विस्थापितों को गर्द में ढकेलते जा रही है The second day of blackouts has crippled India, depriving 600 million people of electricity and leaving half of the country in the dark. Trains have been held up and other important infrastructure has been impacted, leaving giant traffic jams and coal miners stranded underground. I think it's a fallacy today to actually point to environmental issues as being the roadblock for holding back development. because. One thing that the coal scam has quite clearly pointed to is that it's actually the political uh, corporate nexus that's holding us back. Um, it's quite clear that what's actually held us back from achieving our targeted coal production has been land grab in the name of energy security and has been the lining of certain people's pockets instead of actually providing electricity to everyone. There is something in the manner in which the extractive industry operates environmentally and socially that does not lead to prosperity of the locals, but it certainly leads to prosperity of the outsiders, many of whom accumulate vast resources to become members of parliament and members of state legislatures. The locals are left in a state of perpetual poverty. What we are calling for is not stop coal, but basically what is our energy future looking like? And that is not going to be built entirely on coal. It is going to be built with a mix of energy sources. And if you say it's a tiger versus electricity, then you might pick electricity, but that's not the case because it could be electricity from wind, from solar, from efficiency. We lose huge amounts of energy that we generate just because the system is inefficient. So the question might well be, should I be inefficient and kill the tiger or kill the habitat or displace millions of people just because I'm unwilling to be efficient? So it is like, you know, you are opening up new and new ground uh, while your efficiencies are uh, dropping down very low. That is one part of the game. The other is, you know, the rapidity with which you want to raise. You know, if you have a 10 to 12 percent increase, but you know, within a period of sh a short span of three years, you are almost trying to double it, right? Uh, with the result that you know, whatever little uh, kind of compliance, whatever little mechanisms that you had, right from how you allocate to how do you you know look at pollution, everything is thrown away. There has to be a golden mean, some kind of uh, 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 you know balance between the need to preserve environment and the inescapable need to provide power to people. Over the next 20 years, this is going to be a big constraint on India. So how do you get over this problem? And I'd, for instance, I have uh, relocated uh, villages outside tiger habitats. And the only way to do it is involve the, the villager, involve the stakeholder. And I think uh, that's extremely doable.
see this is not an argument that i buy at all because if 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 development is this if development is the picture that singroli shows you then i don't know whether the politicians also want this kind of development is this the is this the face of development that you want you you using their resources you are displacing them from their you know uh, lands you're uh, taking away their livelihoods and then you're putting them in these shackles which are called you know uh, rehabilitation homes or you know rehabilitation colonies and there's no electricity there's no livelihood nothing so if this is the picture of development that we want to paint for the external world then i totally disagree with it you know this is not development for me in short term you know there are uh, issues of forest being damaged environmental issues are arising but i am sure there are methods by which we can create a win win situation where you don't really on long term damage the ecology on long term do not damage the the habitations of people and in fact uh, you create conditions where people who are uh, deprived they live a much better quality of life than what they are living today as long as we are going to exploit coal at the in, at the pace that we have we must at, must strengthen the regulatory systems both of social impact and uh, and uh, and environmental impact and ensure that that uh, that these are seen not as impediments but as necessary complements to uh, to an accelerated growth process what bigger fear can uh, they have and what bigger threat can they be for the tribals is because not only are they homeless they are deprived of the livelihood sources then they are stripped of the constitutional safeguards if they are not again uh, relocated in another schedule 5 area i don't think that's been done in many places where such uh, mining has been uh, taking place and uh, i would also like to emphasize the fact that unfortunately wherever mining has been taken place tribals and the forest dwellers who are living in poverty stricken conditions have become further impoverished the health conditions have deteriorated and uh, i have myself visited many of these areas and there's not one instance where i have seen the tribals or the forest dwellers being taken along this process of so called development within inverted commas coal is basic to the working of the indian economy the arbitrary manner in which rights to mine coal were recently awarded by the government of india to private companies many of them associated with influential politicians has created a major controversy which will not die down in a hurry singroli as it exists today has become a metaphor for much of what has gone wrong with india's development paradigm